at this, but we want to do this dynamically at um, for each call, and we don't want to statically declare an array of a fixed size of any form. So we're going to actually have a couple of helpers to do this. So let's let's define some syntax to, for example, set an arg. There. And we're going to use syntax case here because we're going to assume that there is this uh, type called XM arg list type at the macro call site. And we're going to capture that and use that as our argument type when declaring uh, or when setting an arg list. So we'll grab that. And then we'll set the arg name to name. And the value that. So let's look at this for a second. This one is going to be a macro that takes in an arg list and an index into that arg list, and it's going to set the name and value of that particular argument in that arg list. And so this is just a macro to help us do that. To actually create arg lists, let's do something like this. So we want the name to define the list, because we're going to pre-allocate this arg list at the same time that we define a special type for it, and its size. So we want this, an XM arg list type, to be declared inside of the macro call site scope rather than outside of it. And that way we can use define f type to sort of do this, you know, just in time array declaration stuff. And we can also allocate the right amount of space on a per argument basis. There we go. So now these two macros are going to let us make these arg lists and work with them much more easily than we would have normally. So now we can go back here, and what we want to do is call xt set values with an appropriate argument list on the status bar. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to want to pass the status bar as the first argument. And then we want our arg list is the second. And we just want a single argument here, which is the label string. So let's set that up. What is the arg list going to look like? So we define xm arg list. We give it a name, and we just want one of them. And we're going to set the arg, or arg list, at index 0 to x the label string and text, like so. So what is the XMN label string? Good question. Basically, all it is 
is a string. It's a regular C string, but its value is just label string. So let's let's actually define that now. Let's take, let's see, where should we define that? Let's define that sort of a libxn thing. So let's do that here. And the label string value is just going to be a label string. But we want this to be a C thing. So we're going to make sure we make some room for it. And you may be wondering why I keep doing this byte vector length thing, which seems a little complex. Um, that's to handle the case where our locale may be something special and may be um, affecting us. But in this case, with normal things, we could have just computed this a little more easily. So we're going to make use of memcopy here. And we're going to store into that buffer the value of label string with the correct size. And that will give us an appropriate string to work with. So now we can set the XM label string and we'll set up the arg list correctly here. And so now we have a good way of updating our status bar. And we should be all good. The only thing is we don't have XT set values defined. So let's go ahead and define that. And XT set values takes in U uh, pointer, U pointer, and account. So it takes the arg list as its second argument, and takes the widget as the first, and account as the third, and void is its return value. So now we've set that up. Now all of our foreign calls should be good and our clipboard callback should now work. We should be able to see it uh, in action. Let's make sure we don't have any compile. Let's run scheme. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see if we bust anything. Yep, we get a memory fault. So let's see if we can find out what's going wrong here, and we'll take a look at it. So when debugging these things, one of the things I usually find pretty helpful is to just start with a couple of printouts here. So let's start with that. And let's also realize we didn't actually free our arg list like we should have. So let's make sure we do that. OK. And now we have to find our label and our text. We've set our values. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we've set up to print out the action. And let's see what we get.
So it doesn't even look like we get to this. So that means it's probably a problem with our callbacks in our C file. So let's take a look at that and let's see what we have. We do have our clip. The clip is set up, but if you recall, notice that we've forgotten to add our clip callback to our setup. So let's make sure we've done that. And let's try again. There we go, that's better. So now you can see primary selection cut to clipboard, copied to keep clipboard, and pasted into edit area. And here you can see our leftover debugging of our actions. So now our clip actions work pretty well. But let's see if we can actually make them do something now. So we're going to be taking advantage of the text copy, cut, and paste convenience procedures. But you'll note that each of these requires a time. And these times need to be grabbed from the data that comes in from our uh, from our uh, event that come on um, our button event. So what we want to do is in each one of these cases, we're going to want to run XM text copy with the widget, specifically the edit area widget, and I'm going to want to get the time. And we're going to want to do this on each of these. I want the edit area, or I guess edit text is probably <laughs> a more accurate name. Now, for pasting, we don't need the time, so we'll do that. So how do we write a nice get time procedure? That's a little bit more complicated than it might look, but the edit text, grabbing that's a little easier. So let's have a separate helper that actually grabs our information. Okay. And this is going to work very similar. From with the other one. So since this is so close, I'm actually going to make a helper. Make widget getter. <laughs> 